Hey, this is Slammerama from GamingDrunk.com, bringing you a continuation video from my previous one, talking about how I record my gameplay for my Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or Nintendo Wii, rendered in Sony Vegas for YouTube. Um, I'm using Vegas Pro 11.0, but uh, I have used 9.0 as well, and pretty much the settings are exactly the same. So I'm thinking 9, 10, or 11, it's going to be pretty close. So let's get right to it, and after you install Sony Vegas Pro, uh, I also I'm using 64-bit, but I don't think that matters too much because I think 32 and 64 are almost the same. Uh, who knows? Um, so let's get to it. Here's the first setting you have to deal with after you open Sony Vegas. So the first thing we have to deal with before we even import anything is called Project Video Properties. This is how I do it again. A lot of people do it other ways, but this is my first thing because it makes everything else go smoothly. So click on where the arrow is pointing to. It's called, and if you hover over it, it'll say Project Video Properties. I think it's the shortcut is Alt plus Enter, but whatever you want to use, open that up, and we're going to go into the settings. So once you click on that, the Project Properties window is going to come up at you. And the easiest thing to do, and if you follow the arrow, is just to use the Match Media Settings um, button, or whatever you want to call it. What it does is that it brings up a browse window that allows you to select your M2TS file that was created from your HTPVR and match the file properties. And it makes it easier, makes it uh, a lot more snappier to actually edit the, the file, and it's just smart to do. Now if it errors or you, you, you just don't want to do that, this is pretty much how it should look. Um, it should be 1280 by 720 as you see by the width and height, 1280 by 720, that means it's 720p. Your field order, order is going to be uh, progressive scan, yeah this is not interlaced so yeah that's why you have 720p. Uh, pixel aspect ratio is going to be 1, if it comes up with something else make sure you set it to 1 otherwise it becomes a little bit of a problem. Output rotation. You don't want to. You don't want to turn your uh, your video around. I don't know why you would select that other than zero. Um, your frame rate. This is what I was talking about before in the the previous video. Is that even though it's at six, 60 frames per second, it's not. It's at 59.94, uh, otherwise known as double NTSC. Uh, stereo. Don't even worry about that. Just leave it off. And if we come down here. Sometimes this is set to 8-bit. Now you can leave it at 8-bit if you want. I always change it to 32-bit full range. Just makes my videos look a little better, I think. Um, it probably adds more rendering time for no reason, but I always select it. That's what I do. It probably means nothing. 1.0 linear for your uh, you know, gamma. Uh, the best. I don't know why you would want to do preview or anything else. Um, I also change this. It starts off default as Gaussian. Uh, Gaussian? I don't even know how to say this. I, I'm, I'm so screwed up right now. Uh, but I always change it to uh, asymmetric Gaussian. It seems to give it a better picture quality. Uh, otherwise, you'll see little blocks and weird little artifacts pop up. This actually helps it out for me. Uh, but again, if you have an older computer, maybe try just Gaussian, the, the original, not asymmetric. Uh, Deinterlace method? Well, guess what? You don't have to worry about that because it isn't interlaced. Now, if you had 1080i, yeah, you would have to screw with this, and it's not fun. Uh, make sure you do not have adjust source media to better match project or render settings. If that's checked, it's a pain in the butt. It always causes me errors. So just make sure it's not selected, and you can set at the bottom, start a new project with these settings. I don't. I just use match media before I do it every time, and that's all I do. In the same window, now you're going to select your audio tab. Uh, there's some few settings that might differ from what the uh, match media settings does that I do a little differently. Uh, and this is just plain because of uh, uh, a lot of experience in creating these YouTube videos that sometimes I just see no point um, <laughs> in doing it uh, any more higher quality considering the compression that YouTube does in these videos. Sample rate, even though I think it's probably going to come up for you as 48,000 I always go back to 44,100 um, it's in the settings box it's very easy to get to uh, reason why is that it usually cuts down the rendering time for me and it sounds just fine 
Uh, I also, if your bit depth is at 8, I usually go to 16, but I would not go to 24 because, again, I see no point. 16 is fine, and the file size is great for me. Uh, let's see, and that's pretty much it for the audio tab. And also, I think everything else is pretty much fine, so that's it for the video property setup. So now let's actually import the media that you're going to be working on. And uh, the easiest way to import media is, there's a couple ways. I'm not going to insult your intelligence too much. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure this part out. Um, one of the ways you can do it is this, is file import media. Or you can even, if you have your Windows Explorer already open, just drag and drop your MTUTS either in the timeline or into your project media box in the, in, in the left corner or wherever you have it. Um, but once you have it there, you put it, drag it down your timeline or cut it up. And once you get it down into the timeline, that's when we're going to do some settings that you have to do or your quality is going to suffer. So once it's in your timeline, right click on the video and the first thing we're going to do is actually crop the video. Um, the HDPVR actually adds black lines. You can actually see it in some of my videos before I actually start doing this or when I forget and I forget a lot. Don't be like me. Don't forget to do this because it looks like most people won't realize it. But when you, you start making these videos and you look at other people's, you'll see it and it'll bug you. I don't know why. Human nature is weird. But uh, so, yeah, again, right click and you're going to select video event pan crop. All right. Now the pan and crop um, windows up. There's a couple things you got to do. If you look at the red arrows, you got to make sure lock aspect ratio is on, and you also have to make sure size about center is on. The reason why you want this is that you want it to be the focal point, the center of the image, to be the center. So if you make changes, uh, you don't want it to move around. You don't want to just show the edges. You want to make sure the center is still the center. So make sure that's set, and the aspect ratio, you want to make sure it's still widescreen and not screw around with that. Uh, what you want to do is use the zoom edit tool, which you'll you can probably guess which tool it is. Um, zoom in on a corner, and you're going to see these little these black bar, uh, the the black bar on the the right, and also on the top. Um, it's weird. I don't, I don't know why it's there, but it's there. So after you get zoomed in and you're ready to go, make sure you get the normal edit tool, select that, and then just drag the corner back. And what's going to happen is it's going to resize it for you, and drag it back until those black bars are completely gone. And if you want, if you click up here by the preset, you can actually save it like PVR or something and click the little save icon um, up at the top. And when you import another PVR element um, from your HD PVR, uh, you could just use your preset instead of actually doing this all over again because it's always going to be there. It's always going to be the same. Once you're done, you're just going to close this window. And once back at the main screen, you're going to notice those black bars are gone and you're pretty good there. Next is very important. What you're going to do is you're going to select all your video clips. And you remember you can use shift if you select your first one in the timeline, the last one in the timeline by, while holding shift. You can select multiple uh, clips. Right click on it. Go to switches. Disable resample. If you don't do this, you're probably going, you know what, I'm going to change that probably. You are going to get ghosting. Ghosting is horrible. Pretty much it looks like there's two images on the screen at the same time. That's the best way I can explain it. It, it looks like a horrible motion blur. It, it, it's You'll see it in some people's videos that leave smart resampling on. You'll be like, wow, what the hell's going on? Well, that's because it didn't disable it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's actually, in my next video that I'm going to make for you guys, it's going to be showing you what I render in, in Sony Vegas uh, with... That video can be used for many other purposes too, for different editors as well. Um, but again, I use Sony Vegas. But you're going to be going from 59.94 frames per second to 30 because YouTube only supports 30 frames per second. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. There's also even more compression that YouTube does on your video that makes you lose quality. So, disable resample will help you out a lot. Um, it cuts down your rendering time, so just make sure you do it and save your sanity. <laughs> Believe me, it'll help you later on. So now you you've cropped your your image, your your video, and you've also disabled your sample. At this point, you can be done. You can render it right now as is. 
and it'll look pretty damn good. Uh, actually, for a long time, uh, that's what I did after I did those two things, and I was done. Uh, but I have a few tips and tricks that you guys could try and see and actually play with, and that's what I've been doing. I just play with certain settings. I look up things on the internet, see what other people are doing, and kind of incorporate them in what I what I do, and uh, see how it works for me. So here's some tips and tricks, and mostly they just deal with video filters that I've been trying out. So to apply some video filters, first you're gonna have to find how to do it, and it's actually right next to your clip in timeline mode and it's if you hover over it it'll call it'll be called track effects so just follow the red arrow and just click on that so once you click on that the plugin chooser window is going to come up and i've really been only messing around with three things that have helped me uh... create my videos and if you hold control you can select them all at once um, so i use sony saturation adjust Sony Sharpen and Sony Soft Contrast. So select all three of those holding control, hit add and then click OK at the top right. After you click OK this should come up showing all the different video filters that you've applied. If not you just have to go right back into that and look at all the track effects that you have added. Uh, but this should come up right afterwards. Now if you click on saturation adjust I use the straight preset from Sony called Boost Midtones. It seems to do pretty well for me. Uh, if you want to change these numbers around, see how it uh, changes for you. But for me, Boost Midtones works really well. Next, select the Sharpen tab. Make sure you don't uncheck any of these because if you uncheck them, that means it undoes it. I mean, it doesn't use it. Uh, so just click on the name Sharpen without unchecking it. Uh, but back to it. I have a preset called Light 100. I've been screwing with this a little bit, but if I set it to 0 .100, it does a pretty good job. It helps it after it renders because you do lose image quality, but with this, it actually helps the image quality after you render it. And kind of like Sharpen, Soft Contrast does the same. Um, it actually screws up the preview, but I'll get to that. Uh, what I do for my Soft Contrast settings is that I put everything to zero except for the contrast slider and I usually mess with that on a video to video basis anywhere from 20 all the way to 50. Uh, I normally keep it right around 30. It's a pretty good starting point and then I go back and forth from there looking at the preview and my best advice because uh, let me get to that we might as well do it right now. In the preview it's going to look really dark. Not really dark but you'll see it you're like wow I'm, it looks crappier than before. But when you render it out, you, it'll look a lot better. It makes no sense, but especially when I'm dealing with main concept MP4s, um, it, it, it makes the, the image quality a lot, lot clearer. Uh, really highlights the difference, the, the blacks and whites and the different colors. Um, so what I recommend, and this is what I do, is, okay, say you've got a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 or 3, whatever the hell they're on, it's all the same to me. <laughs> But uh, get a really small subclip. Not even. Just make sure it's got some action in it, some a lot of uh, pretty good movement in it. So about you can go maybe 10, 20 seconds. Uh, then you do all your filters, do everything like you're going to do in in the entire footage. Uh, put your filters in there and put what you think looks good. Then you render it out into what you're going to render in. And again, I'm going to show you that in my next video what my render settings are. But what happens is you can kind of get an idea, oh, that looks better, maybe I should less contrast, more contrast, maybe a little bit more sharpness, uh, maybe you, you screwed up the black bars and they're still there, things like that. And what happens is that it takes only a couple, if at the most, maybe a couple minutes to render, rather than rendering a 30-minute clip, which takes you know two hours and when it comes out you're like, what the hell, I forgot, <laughs> you know, I forgot about the bars. Um, so that's my advice. That's what I do. So, because like a hockey clip, NHL 12 clip is going to be completely different settings in, in contrast in most of my video filters than a Call of Duty Black Ops clip. It's going to be completely different. So, yeah, that's my advice using the video filters. So, I think off the top of my head, I think that's pretty much all you need to know to get started using Sony Vegas and, and uh, the HD PVR and and uh, start making YouTube videos. I'm going to show you my render settings in my next video. Now, uh, before I was talking about how 
I usually use Sony Vegas. I probably should mention that I don't. I I use Vegas to render, but not compress for YouTube anymore. Uh, but I'm not going to show you that method, the my weird method that I do nowadays, because I've been doing both Vimeo and YouTube um, for not just gaming drunk, but for other projects. But using Sony Vegas, I'll show you my settings that I use, um, and I'm going to explain why I do it. A lot of people are probably not going to agree because they're going to go, "Wow, those settings are pretty pretty low." But when you look at how much YouTube compresses the videos, you're wasting your time, and it's you know, most people are not going to complain about the quality of your videos with the settings I'm going to give you. Uh, they're just going to complain about the content. I get that all the damn time. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be my next video. I'll get that the, the site set up so I can show you guys if I forgot anything. And, and it'll be easier to follow in the text version anyways, probably, than this. And again, this is Slamrama from GamingDrunk.com. Thank you for watching.